this series, as Danny said, this is our last service of 2017. Oh, I know. It's been a fun year. And we've got some really cool stuff coming up in 2018. In fact, we're going to have a, a party at our house on New Year's Eve for you guys from 7 to 1230. It's going to be fun. We'll get to that later. Tonight, we are talking about, everyone say, this Christmas. That's right, because this Christmas is how many days away? Eight. Who is just overly excited? Anybody? You're like, yes, game on. All right, you know what you're getting for Christmas, right? Now, I don't know about you. Okay, maybe you're like, I have no idea. Surprise is inbound. Okay. Well, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to kind of, you can even talk for just a second, and I want to hear some of your responses. What is the best Christmas gift you've ever gotten? Like, hands down, what's the best thing you've ever gotten? And go. On my phone, okay. Okay, doll, okay. What else? Oh, come on, there's got to be a favorite Christmas gift, right? Surely. I can think of two. Okay. You got a boat? Like, like a, a boat like you sail on? Oh, like a, oh, Katniss Everdeen. Hunger Games, okay, Bo, all right. That is actually, that's really cool. Are you good? Nice, nice. I'm going to have to make sure I don't make you mad. Okay. Um, no, that's, no, that's really, that's, that's so cool. I would be terrible at that. What else? Anybody, a favorite gift, like the best gift you've ever gotten hands down, or just a favorite, maybe not the favorite. Like, <laughs> I'm guessing not, or you lost your dog, maybe. You can't remember if you even have the dog. Well, let me tell you my favorite gift. It's like unconfirmed. I don't know about this dog. Um, my favorite gift of all time was probably my Game Boy Color. Aw, yeah. That's right. The Game Boy Color was one of the first handhold Game Boy, Game Boy consoles. Um, some of my favorite games of all time were, are still on that Mario Tennis. Oh, Man, let me just tell you, Pokemon, what's up? But here's the thing, the screens weren't backlit, so like if you played in a dark room, you had to actually have like a flashlight and hold it above the screen so you could see, like that's OG gaming right there, okay? That's the grassroots, all right? It was fun, I love that, and I'll never forget that gift as long as I'm alive. But one of the greatest things about Christmas is the gifts, right? I mean, like, let's just be real, all right? I mean, presents aren't the only thing, but they're one of the best parts, right? Can we just be real for a minute? Okay, all right, I appreciate it, the honesty, yeah. So maybe you've gotten a crummy gift before, but maybe you've, you've when, there, when Christmas morning happened and that gift came, you had an experience kind of like this. It means to Alex. Oh no, does. My no. talking to Sammy. Xbox One! Is Xbox One? Oh, no. <laughs> acted quite that violently to a gift. That's kind of how I was with my Game Boy Color. I was just like, yes! I mean, like, it was, I was ready. I'm like, forget everything else. Like, go see family. Nah, I got to play Pokemon, okay? Like, it was going down. But we, we all have probably memories of Christmas that are great, and, and we, we cherish those because they're so special. But the, the reality is this, that everyone, this is point number one on your program, everyone loves a good gift, Everyone does. There, I don't know a person alive that doesn't like getting a gift, okay, besides the Grinch. All right, and he stole Christmas, so I feel like that's an exception to the rule. But we all love getting a good gift. And if you've grown up in church, you've probably heard the story about uh, the Christmas and maybe as long as you can remember where we see the best gift of all. The, the church, number one church answer, Jesus. That's right. That's right. And because he is the best gift. And even if you didn't grow up in church, you've probably seen displays um, of a baby in a manger surrounded by some animals and some people with really weird clothes, kind of like this picture here. Take a look. The original lit fam. That's right. Yes. Yes. Oh, I dropped a, an actual reference that was on point. Okay. All right. But no, maybe you've seen something like this, and, and the Christmas is something that's ingrained into every single one of us. No matter whether you love Christmas music or movies or not, or whether you're just like, ah, bah humbug, 
we all have some kind of good feeling about Christmas. And maybe, if you, even if you haven't heard this story, I'm going to give you the, the briefest rundown that I can give you. There was this teenage girl named Mary, okay, and she unexpectedly becomes pregnant. Well, it's unexpected because she's a virgin, so yeah. And so an angel comes to her and says, hey, don't be afraid. This, is, this baby's going to be the savior of the world. This is meant to happen. And so um, she and, and here's, I want to say this, as an, an unmarried pregnant teenager, that's a pretty big deal, especially back in those days. It's even worse than it is now. So she and her fiance, Joseph, travel to a town called Bethlehem where Mary has her baby in a stable, like for animals, okay? And people start showing up. These people start to celebrate the Savior that came. And uh, th- there's a lot more to this story, but that's kind of the gist of it. And the point is this. God himself came to earth in the form of a tiny helpless baby so that he could be the best gift of all to us, that he could be our Savior. And so tonight I want to take a look at Isaiah 9-6, and I want you to, to look at this on your program because I'm going to have you underline a couple of things. But I want you to imagine for a second with me what it must have been like all of those years ago to await a Savior, okay? I want you to imagine the worst situation you've ever been in. Maybe, maybe your finals week is coming up and you are like terrified, out of your mind. You know, like, I need a Savior to deliver me from these tests, okay? I want you to imagine that the Savior has not yet come that it hasn't happened yet and you're waiting, but this Christmas is the one that's going to change it all. This is the, the year, this is it, where he's going to come. And so this, uh, this was before Jesus came, kind of anticipating this gift. And it says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is... I want you to underline the word given. It was a gift. And it says the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called. I want you to underline there are four words here. I'm going to tell you which ones. The first one is wonderful. He's the wonderful counselor. The next I want you to underline is the word mighty. He is mighty. He's the mighty God. The next word is everlasting. He's the everlasting father. And lastly, he's the prince of. Underline the word peace. See, the thing I think is so interesting when I read this, this passage of Scripture, I've heard it for many, many Christmases, okay? I've heard it like hundreds of times, it feels like. But I got something new when I was reading this, and that's there are four words, I think, that describe what, you want, what we want in every single gift, right? We want it to be wonderful. You don't want a lame gift. You want to get socks with Christmas. I mean, not like with, I'm not talking about with dinosaurs on them. I'm talking about just socks, Womp, womp, womp. You're like, oh, that, thanks, thanks. I'd rather have coal. Okay. And that, not that coal. That coal is awesome. I'm talking about like the coal that you burn, okay, like, like in the fireplace. Okay. You want your gift to be mighty. If you're getting the iPhone X for Christmas, you don't want it to break. I mean, that thing's just pure glass. Like, that's just a terrible idea. But you don't want it to break day one, right? I did that one Christmas with my PSP. It, I, it broke day one. I had to get it shipped off, and it came three weeks later. You don't want it to break. You want it to be mighty. You want it to be everlasting, to last you as long as it can, and you want it to bring you peace, not worry or anxiety or, or be, to be afraid of it. That would be kind of bad. But these are all of the things that Jesus is because Jesus is the perfect gift. But here's what's so cool about this. The person who wrote this in in Isaiah, he, he said, what he's getting at is this. He knew, even though that he had never met Jesus, he never would on earth, he would one day later in heaven, he knew something important that is critical for us today, and he knew this, that Jesus changes everything. He does. Jesus came to earth because God loved us so much that he wanted to fix this relationship, this barrier that had come between. And so he sent his only son so that we could know him better. In fact, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, this is on your program on the screen as well, this is after Jesus has resurrected. And I, I really think it's important for us as we understand what Jesus came to do. And it says, now that we know that we have Jesus, this great high priest, with ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin, because he became a man. And we continue on here. 
So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to underline the word give. It's a gift. Take the mercy, accept the help. Let me kind of break this down. You're maybe like high priest. I don't even know what all that means. Basically, back in the before Jesus, there had to be someone who could make things right between us and God. There was this guy who would like slaughter animals and offer it as a sacrifice and all these rituals so that we could be close to God. But Jesus came once and for all to be the sacrifice that we needed so that we could know him forever. That's why he created the original lit fam, because he knew that we needed a savior. He knew that we needed someone more, something more. And because Jesus is God is our creator, he chose to become his own creation so he could walk among us. So that brings me to point number two in your program. Maybe you guessed it already, but Jesus is the best gift ever. He is. It's just the truth. I mean, like, you can't get a better gift than this. And maybe you're like, well, duh, okay, Jesus. Like, the reason for the season, right? Okay, that phrase drives me crazy. I've heard it 17 billion times, okay? But it's, it's true. It, it is. The reason that we celebrate is we love the gifts. I love hanging out with family. I love the, f- oh, I love the food. Oh, let me get some cranberry sauce. Oh, it's game on. A little dressing on the side with some turkey. Oh, mm. now you can keep the fruitcake. I don't, uh, nah, I ain't about that life. But there are lots of things about Christmas that I love and you probably love too, right? You have your own traditions and things that make it great. But Jesus is the best gift ever. He came to restore our relationship with God. He came to show us what God was like so that we could know him. And when he came, he changed everything. That's why we sing about the miracle of this baby, the savior of the world, being born in a dirty, nasty, stinky stable with those gross cows and sheep because sheep stink, okay? If you don't know, go find a sheep. It stinks. I can just tell you that. We celebrate the birth of Jesus because of the birth that we can have through him because of new life. We celebrate the, new, the life of Jesus because of the new life he offers us both now and forever because Jesus changes everything. So the gift that he offers us is not just a Christmas time gift, right? You probably get presents at your birthday and Christmas, right? Fair, fair assessment, okay? Maybe here and there, like when a relative comes to town, and you're like, yes, my aunt's coming and she always brings good stuff, right? Like, do you have that family member? Okay, maybe if you, all right, hey, that's cool. That's cool. I don't, but I wish, I dream, I hope that one day they'll just drop gifts all the time. No, I'm just playing. But if you've never accepted this gift before, I want you to know it's not just at Christmas time that it's offered. You can accept it anytime. But I don't want you to let this Christmas go by without experiencing it the way God wants you to. You can make this Christmas different from all the others. So tonight I have a couple of next steps for you on your connection card. You flip it over on the back. I think there's a step for every single person in this room. Maybe for the first time, you want to think about Jesus as more than just that baby in a manger with some stinky cows and sheep. Maybe you want to see him as the Savior, the guy who can save you from all the sin and the things that maybe you don't even want to admit are going on in your life. He can save you from that. And tonight, in just a few moments, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to invite you to pray along with me. Uh, a prayer. But if you want that for the very first time, I want you to check the box that says, I want to accept Jesus's gift of new life. If that's you, check the box. We'll pray in just a moment. It's the best gift you can ever have because Jesus changes everything and he can change you. If tonight you've already done that and you're like, look, it's been a little rough patch. I've been away from him, but I want to change that. Then this one is for you. Uh, next step number two is I will value Jesus' gift again. This is just a recommitment. It's not to say that you accepted the gift, but then you threw it away, and then now you got to take it back. No, no, no. Once you've accepted the gift, it's there, but you have to cherish it. You have to appreciate that gift that was given to you. And so tonight, if that's you, I just encourage you to check that box. Let that be a commitment to start over. And lastly, I think if you're like, Tim, I've got all these things down. I'm good to go. I'm just ready for Christmas. Well, I think there's one thing that we can all do, and I'm including myself. I will share the news about Jesus' gift with blank. Write someone's name in. For me, it's my friend Will. My friend Will knows the story. He knows about the gift, but he needs to be reminded that Jesus loves him and that the gift is free. 
It's the best gift he can ever have. And I encourage you to do the same tonight. Don't let this Christmas go by and just be another Christmas. Don't let it be one where it happens and then December 26th comes around, Boxing Day, because that's lame. (laughs) And you're like, I got 364 more days until Christmas. No, if you let Jesus' gift change you, every single day is Christmas. Every single day is a celebration of the gift that he's given you. So let this Christmas be different. Let this Christmas, let Jesus change everything. Let's pray. God, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this ministry. I'm so grateful for every single student and volunteer in this room. And tonight, if there is someone who wants to accept that new gift or maybe even to revalue that gift this year, God, I just want you to... Guys, I just want you to say these words. You can say them out loud or you can say them in your mind after me. Dear God, help me to know you. Save me from myself and my sin. I want to follow you with everything I have. Change me and help me to be more like you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. So, and everybody said amen.